So, I did say we were going to make a video about this topic, but we had not explored it just yet. So, on this very lovely Saturday evening... Evening? No, afternoon. It's not even Saturday. No, it's Sunday! Yes, because I'm pre-recording this video. Yeah, it's currently Thursday as I talk to you on this microphone. It's 12... 00:57 a.m. so it's just past midnight over here. I'm pre-recording for a trip, but I wanted to go over the 2022 NHL draft rankings that actually were the more accurate ones out of the bunch. Because when it comes to the top 5, let's just say, 5. There you go. Good number. I think a lot of people would go out there and say that the first 5 selections of the draft didn't really go in the order that most people expected. And so, when you go over to NHL Network, what they did was they compiled the primary lists, I guess you could say. Yeah, the main four of the draft rankings heading into the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, and they compared them all. They took a look at the rankings on NHL.com, they took a look at the rankings on The Athletic, they took a look at the Sportsnet and TSN rankings, and compared the top five selections from each of them. Now, I'm going to go out there and say that six names actually pop up amongst all of these lists. There are five picks each, four lists, so there's a total of 20 draft predictions over here. And out of these 20, there are only six names that really circulate throughout the entire conversation here. And what I wanted to do was go over the list that actually was the most accurate than all the others, and it was by quite a long shot as well. We're going over onto The Athletic and looking at this list right here. NHL Mock Draft 2022. Corey Pronman predicts all seven rounds. Now, Corey Pronman is a guy that is in this scouting community. He works for The Athletic, he writes articles, and a lot of people will frequently go out there and disagree with his takes. This is mostly because when he writes about prospects, he's really not afraid to go out there and defy the common perspective as to who is good, who is bad, what traits some players have comparative to other players, and like... As a result, you'll find many prospect fans from across the NHL and its fan bases disagreeing with what Pronman ends up writing. And this article, the first few picks of his own mock draft, went out there and had even more controversy based off of the picks that he made. Let's go over each of these four lists and go over the top five picks as to whom the NHL.com writers, the athletic guys, aka Pronman by himself, Sportsnet, and TSN all said should go in the top five. The first overall pick for the Montreal Canadiens was selected by NHL.com as being Shane Wright. The Athletic had Slavkovsky, Sportsnet, and TSN each had Wright as well. So, right off the bat, Shane Wright number one, sorry buddy, he didn't go first overall, in fact he went fourth. The second overall pick on all these lists go as follows. NHL.com, Sportsnet, and TSN each have Yuri Slavkovsky, whereas Corey Pronman put David Yerichek to go second to New Jersey. Now, the philosophy that he writes about in the article is pretty similar to what we had been talking about in real life. Hey, the Devils don't need right. They have Hughes, they have Hishier, they're good. They do need, however right-handed defense. And if a guy who is at the caliber of a Yerichek or a Nemich is up there, available at second overall, and you could debate that he's in the same caliber of prospect as some of these guys like Wright, etc., etc., the New Jersey Devils taking a defenseman at second overall is not all too ludicrous, and hey, Pronman, even though he's not correct in the choice they made, he's correct in the philosophy behind it. Third overall is where things get a little bit nutty, as NHL.com predicts Simon Nemec to go to Arizona, Sportsnet has Cutter Gauthier going third overall to Arizona because he's a hometown guy, TSN and Pronman each had Logan Cooley, though, going at number three. This is what happened in real life, and a lot of people would go out there and say, hey, wait a minute, Shane Wright's still available, why was Cooley taken off the board first? Well, you can go to a previous video that we made talking about why each of the three teams, the Canadiens, the Devils, and the Coyotes, passed up on Wright, and then you go over to the fourth overall spot. NHL.com had the Seattle Kraken taking Juracek, Sportsnet had him taking Nemec, so did TSN. Meanwhile, the athletic Corey Pronman went out there and accurately predicted Shane Wright to number four. And then you have Cooley Cooley on NHL.com and Sportsnet going to Philadelphia. TSN had Yerichek going to Philadelphia. Hey, guess what? Corey Pronman had Cutter Goche going to the Flyers at fifth. That is what happened in real life, too. Corey Pronman nailed four out of the five first five picks in this year's draft. 
And the one that he didn't nail was just kind of a difference in philosophy. The Devils like Nemec more than Juracek, but the reasoning as to why Juracek would have been taken second applies to Nemec properly as well. So this is absolutely insane. To take a look at how one dude whom everybody goes out there and disagrees with once in a while accurately predicted the first five picks more so than any other main scouting outlet, and he predicted right to go four. This is the same athletic piece published on the subreddit, the R Hockey subreddit, back when it was published here. And you could see the very first comment by Homicidal Penguin right off the top, having Shane go fourth overall is certainly a hot take. And then some of the replies are like, oh, well, crap, eh? LMAO. You gotta get them clicks right, CB Joe says, before the actual draft commenced. And then everybody replies saying, hey, you might want to rethink this, buddy. Or you just gotta get it right. A reply says, hey, you gotta pay for this horrible content. I hate mock drafts, etc, etc. While Prodman isn't my favorite prospects writer, I read his draft ranking with interest. This article, though, I'm not really all too interested in it. And then the reply says, well, you got your money's worth because, I mean, he guessed correctly. Here are some other comments here. I don't like to use this word often, but I'm pretty sure Corey Prodman is a... Yeah, I'm not going to read that. It's, yeah, I don't want to piss off the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, fella says, you still think so? You still think that he is that? Because, look, I'm going to say it right here. It's an absolutely crazy take. Crazy take to have right fourth overall, like a week before the draft started. Like, if anybody went out there and said that to me, like, regularly, like, when I read this article initially, I was like, oh my gosh, like, fourth? Are you serious, bro? But as Bo Horvat so eloquently put it back in 2013, after the Devils and the Canucks made the ninth overall pick trade, wherein the Canucks selected Bo, anything can happen on draft day. And that is exactly what happened here, where you had Shane Wright just falling and falling and falling. I know we've milked this topic so much, but it's one of the biggest things that I feel like you could actually talk about at this time. If you took a time machine back to 2020 and you said, hey, guess what, Shane Wright, that guy that's dominating the world under 18s, yeah, he's gonna go fourth. Him and Beneers playing on the same team, and Corey Pronman went out there and predicted it properly. Like, heck, the top three, like the top four-ish, you're supposed to be able to get these ones pretty clearly. Like, Hughes, Kako, okay, Doc was kind of a toss-up there, we weren't really too surprised to see and Byram go. In 2020, it was Byfield, Lafreniere, Stutzla. Or, not in that order, but you get what I mean. Pretty clear, pretty straightforward. The year after that, we had ourselves power. We had Beneers. McTavish kind of snuck in there, and then Luke Hughes was also there. Yeah, that's fine. That's a conversation that we were all ready to have. But in 2022, the first overall projected pick went fourth. And you had Slavkovsky, Nemec, and Cooley all go on top of him. Like, just looking at this list in isolation, having Cooley over Wright in the eyes of fans reading the article at the time, like, that's absolutely bananas. But it happened. Ay ay ay, Corey Prodman, man. I know he's getting a lot of flack, like, at the very moment that I'm recording this audio because he just published a list of the top, I think it's like under 23 players in the NHL, or not in the NHL, but just like in hockey or whatever it is. And like, I know people are debating, oh, Cole Caulfield is too low, or X is too low, X is too high. Like, people in particular are calling out Prodman for writing about Cole Caulfield's like skating ability or whatever it is. And like, this is what I mean. People go out there and disagree with this guy all the time, but when he hits? Boy, oh boy, does he freaking hit. Here's a Twitter thread I wanted to read to end off this video. Corey Pronman predicted the top four of Slavkovsky, Juracek, Cooley, Wright in his most recent mock draft. Wright at four seems low, but did Pronman do it again? Okay, so it seems I doomed Pronman to miss one pick. Simon Nemich to New Jersey at two before Cooley to Arizona as predicted at three. I still admire going two of three at the top. Plus, I'm old enough to remember when he called half the 2020 draft before it was announced. It's like what Bob McKenzie is doing right now. Corey Pronman is on that ball. So, talk to the comments about your thoughts about Corey Pronman accurately predicting Shane Wright to go fourth overall. Do you think it was a fluke? Do you think he's just crafting a crazy article for the sake of getting clicks? Or do you think there's a method behind the madness here? Some sort of inside track or philosophical thinking that allows him to see the future with the draft picks? Because, I mean, the top five, it went the way that he thought it would, just without the Devils choosing Juracek over Nemec. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire conversation over here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll show us 99 and bye.